Today, I'm going to make a, a pan of brownies. And um, I usually have a cameraman that's filming me, but today the phone is on a tripod. So please excuse the uh, hesitations and the delays as I position the camera as it needs to be. Uh, I used to make everything from scratch, cakes, brownies, etc. But now with one hand, it is just easier to use a mix. And also smaller batches are easier to make than a big batch. So most often I use an eight by eight cake pan rather than the nine by 12. It's just easier, faster, easier to handle with one hand. So let's just begin. First, obviously, you have to uh, light, heat the oven, which I have done already, so it is at the appropriate temperature. And then open the uh, brownie mix. I, I wear an apron because a lot of times I'm using my belly to hold something in place. So I'm using my belly uh, and holding the box against the counter. Uh, to open the package, I use a small paper cutter. So I open the um, holder and place the package inside position it well. And then use the blade sometimes. Yeah, and it works. Sometimes the package is too full and I can't really use that this paper cutter, so I just fumble through with the scissors. So now I'm going to pour the uh, mix into the bowl. To hold things, I had I am using a weighted bowl that has kind of a silicone grip at the bottom, and that works real well. I also use when I need to, uh, either a silicone um, mat, but what I found works the best, has the most grip, is these, I got these as a premium. It's They're actually jar grippers, uh, but they really grip well. And it really, the, the bowl really stays in place. Let me, we need to grease the pan so I have my oil ready that is needed for the recipe and I just get a small piece of wax paper and dip it in here and then use that to grease the, the pan. I have the mix in the bowl now. Next, I'm going to add the oil, as the recipe calls for, one fourth cup. And now I need to crack the eggs and put them in the brownie mix. So you, you can see YouTube videos of people who are just excellent at cracking an egg with one hand. I'm just so-so. And when your other egg is rolling away and you have to grab it, that also kind of adds to the effort. So I am able to get it in there. The egg broke, the yolk broke, but that's okay. I don't have any shells in it, which is good. Wow. 
one big clack and that breaks the egg and then I just get my thumb in and pull it apart. That turned out pretty well this time. We have to add two tablespoons of water. So turn the faucet on at a very slow rate. Now to stir it up, I used to use, when I had two arms, a stand mixer, but it's just too heavy and big and cumbersome for me. So now I use an immersion mixer and it works pretty good. I think if you are a very particular uh, baker or you are making a very special elaborate recipe, like perhaps a souffle or, or something that uses egg whites and meringue, this may not work for you because you don't really have any um, control over the speed. It's just one speed uh, and very fast. Uh, but for making a simple recipe like a brownie mix, it works fine and it's easier for me to do. So here goes. around the sides of the bowl and along the bottom to get everything all stirred up. Now to scrape off the mixer, here's another hard part. It's hard to, you don't want it to fall over, yet I only have one hand to unplug this and to, there, goodness, that worked better without this pad. That surprises me, okay. So, ah, as I was saying, that's kind of hard. So I'm, good, I'm attempting now to scrape off the, the mixer head. This is a hard part because how do you hang on to it, hold it in place while you're trying to, to scrape? So again, I'm using my belly. And I'm gonna use this pan to kind of hold it in place as well. There we go. Now, I'm not a child of the depression, but I'm a child of the child of the depression. So it's just as hard for me to not just scrape off every little bit. But I, I'm just, I'm trying to come to grips with the fact that I'm not gonna get everything. And then I guess that just leaves more for the person who licks the bowl clean. So I've got some leftovers here that I'm just not able to scrape off. The immersion blender really works better with a narrow um, bowl that is just really close to the size of the immersion blender head. Uh, it, it's easier to get all of those little pieces and all that little bits of mix that are along the side and along the bottom. But it this, what I have, only holds two cups and I was pretty sure that the brownie mix uh, will, would take up more than two cups. So I wasn't able to use that for this mix today. Now to scrape the mix into the bowl, into the pan, the baking pan. Now it will stay there in place. Let me move the camera so you can see it a little bit better. but it does get the, the outside of your bowl very messy. I like a bigger size 
rubber scraper rather than a smaller size. then trying to get the last bits out you have to be have more patience and just hold it longer than you might want to it doesn't quite fit so that yeah there you can just you, if you want to you can walk away and let gravity do its course I'm going to take this opportunity to scrape off the brownie mix that is on the side of the bowl. Yeah, but then it falls in again. So it's a pretty messy pro proposition, all in all. And there's only a, so much that I've figured out to reduce the mess, we, as in not much. You can see there's still too much in there for me to be comfortable to leave behind. So I'm going to do the process again. Some recipes are uh, have more liquid and perhaps has more water in it. Uh, they're lighter. Like, for example, there's a, a zucchini bread recipe that I use that uh, I think because of the mass of the zucchini and it, it doesn't have as much oil, uh, it, it pours out of the mixing bowl easier. It, isn't, it doesn't stick so much to the sides. So that's satisfying to me. Yeah, see, you can see how much gets on here. So again, you can just let gravity do its course, leave it, walk away, do something else. You know, that's always an option. If you can get it to stay in place without falling off. I'm going to scrape off my rubber, rubber spatula on the side of the bowl. And you don't want to leave that stuck there because that that's burn it, it's just wasted. It it burns on there. You don't get to eat it as delicious brownie and it's bad for your pan, it makes your pan all sticky. So after I have as much scraped off the sides as I can, then I take that wax paper or, or even a, a, a paper towel or dishcloth and wipe that all off. Probably a paper towel would be better that will it will be cleaner. Won't leave as much residue. Now I'm using a damp paper towel to wipe off uh, the drippings from the side of the pan so that it doesn't burn on and make a mess and also be difficult to clean up your baking pan. You don't have to get right down to the level of the mix because the brownies will rise somewhat. 
So here's my pan of brownies ready to go into the oven. I'll show you an after picture um, after they come out. So here's the finished product. You can see that the textures are different. You know, the inside is smoother than the outside and there's a big crack around it, it raised. So that's an indication that uh, it wasn't perhaps mixed as well as it could be, uh, but still very edible. Thank you for joining us today in One Arm University. I'm Evelyn McKnight. We made brownies with one arm. Um, as you saw, there was some struggles, some hard spots. So if you have any suggestions of how to make baking, cooking in general, any kind of daily task, easier with just one arm, please add a comment. Um, let's work together as a community to help each other. So thanks again. We'll see you next time.